In section 3 of chapter 10, we are going to be investigating the seven key properties of logarithms. Now that said, there are technically more than seven properties, but these seven will carry you all the way through all of calculus. Whenever you approach logarithms in the future, these seven properties should be brought to the forefront of your brain. You need to have these memorized and known, just like you know the power rules of x to the third times x to the fifth is x to the eighth power. Just like how you internalize that property and that rule because you use it so much, you need to do that for all seven of the properties I'm about to explain to you now. Here's the first property. Log base x of 1 is always, always, always equal to 0. x can be any positive number that you wish. But this property always holds to be true. Now, why does this property always hold to be true? Well, if I switch this to exponential form, you would see why this property is always true. As an exponential, this logarithmic expression or equation is the same thing as saying x to the 0 power is equal to 1. That's always true regardless of what the value of x is. 7 to the 0 power is equal to 1. 341 to the 0 power is equal to 1. Pi to the 0 power is equal to 1. That logarithmic expression, that property, is the same thing as stating this exponential property. So what does that mean? For my two examples, if you have log base 7 of 1, that's just equal to 0. Whenever the interior of the logarithm is equal to 1, the answer is just 0, no matter what. Problem 2, log base 5,172 of 1. Even though this is a really, really large number, I don't care. If this is equal to 1, then that means the answer is 0. As a little tangential note, the interior of the logarithm is never, ever allowed to be smaller than or equal to 0. Because you can never take a number and then use an exponent to make it negative or to make it 0. You can never have any number you choose from. You can never bring that number to a power and have that turn into a negative or to turn into zero. So an unwritten rule of logarithms is the interior of the parentheses has to be greater than zero. Not greater than or equal to, has to be greater than zero. Property number two. This one we use all the dang time. This is our bread and butter. Log base x of x is equal to one. So whenever the base of the logarithm is equal to the interior of the logarithm, it always is equal to 1. Why is that? If I rewrote that as an exponential, that is saying x to the first power is always equal to x. Anything to the first power is equal to itself. So that logarithmic property is the same thing as this exponential property. And we use that property of log base x of x is equal to 1. We use that all the time. Whenever the base of the logarithm is equal to the interior of the logarithm, you just can turn it into a 1. So example number 2, log base 17 is 17. The base is 17. The inside is 17. The answer is just 1. That's property number 2. The first two properties are kind of throwaways, we use them, yes, but those aren't the ones that are going to cause you a headache and be a little complicated. Property 3 and onwards is where it gets more complex. Property number 3, this we use all the time. Log base x of a to the power of b is equal to b times log base x of a. That is to say, if you have a power inside of a logarithm, you can bring that power outside. So this power of b, according to this property, I can bring that outside of the logarithm through multiplication. Now here's the second thing that's going to be important for the rest of these properties. All of these properties work in both directions. I can, if I have a power inside of a logarithm, I can bring that out front of the logarithm through multiplication. 
And the reverse of that is also true. If I have a number being multiplied by a logarithm, I can bring that number inside of the logarithm as an exponent. And here are two examples that exemplify both. Example number one, I have log base three of nine. That is the same thing as log base three of three squared, because three squared is equal to nine. Property three states that if I have a power, that two, I can take that power and bring it outside of the logarithm through multiplication. This is the same thing as two times log base three of three. And here I could utilize property number two because the base of the logarithm is equal to the interior of the logarithm. That's property two. That means that this is just gonna turn into a one. Last I checked, two times one is equal to two. Now, of course, I could have circumvented all of that and just read the logarithm. This is saying three to what power is equal to nine? Two. But the property also works. That is not typically how we use it. Most logarithmic problems or properties, problems that involve the properties, typically you'll have a complex looking logarithm and you're gonna use the properties to simplify it. Like problem number two. I have four times log base four of one half. Because I have a number on the outside of the logarithm, I can bring that inside of the logarithm as an exponent. So this is the same thing as log base four of one half to the fourth power. That is log base four of one over 16. And that is simplifiable because 4 to the negative 2 power would give me 1 over 16. So the answer to this is negative 2. Property number 4 is log base x of a times b is equal to log base x of a plus log base x of b. So if you have the product of two numbers inside of a logarithm, you can break that logarithm into the sum of their individual logarithms. Conversely, if you have two logarithms with the same base that are being added to one another, you can turn that into a single logarithm by just multiplying their interiors. So example number one, I have log base seven of two x, that is two times x. Now I don't know why any mathematician would ever want to do this, but you could technically break that single logarithm into two logarithms being log base seven of two plus log base seven of x. Now, I would never do that. The reason I wouldn't do that is I started with one logarithm and then I did that process to get two of them. I did not simplify this. I made it more complex. I had one thing and I turned it into two. More often than not, you're gonna get problems like number two. I have two logarithms being added together. Critically, they have to have the same base. They both have a base of six, so I can utilize property four to combine those together into a single logarithm where I take their interiors and multiply them together. So that's log base six of 10. So property four says if you're multiplying on the inside, you can simply add the two separate logarithms. Property five is the sister to this property. It says if you are dividing on the inside of the logarithm, you could separate that into two logarithms through subtraction. If you recall back to the power rules, which is kind of where these are derived from, it makes sense. X squared times X to the fifth power so we're multiplying, is equal x to the two plus five power. We add the exponents. So multiplication, we add exponents. For logarithms, multiplication on the inside of the logarithm equals the sum of the two logarithms. Additionally, if you're dealing with division, x to the eighth power divided by x to the third power, you go x to the eight minus three power. With division, we subtract. Here, with division, we subtract. Now again, problem number one, I would never do this because I have a single logarithm, but you could technically break that into 
log base 8 of x minus log base 8 of 3. But that's not a simplification process. I just went from one logarithm to two. More often than not, you're going to see problems like number two, log of 8 minus log of 2x. Remember, I do not have a logarithm base written here. That means we assume it's a 10. This will turn into log of 8 divided by 2x. That is simplifiable because you can divide a 2 into an 8. That gives me log of 4 over x as my final answer. Property number 6 is the easiest to identify when you're going to use it. Because property 6 is the only property that tackles logarithms as a power. If you see a logarithm as an exponent, you're going to use property 6. Property 6 states, if you have an exponential x to the power of a logarithm, where the base of that logarithm as a power is equal to the base of the exponential. So that is to say the base of my exponential is an x, the base of the logarithm is an x. Then what happens is these two kind of cancel, and the solution is whatever's left inside of the logarithm. So for my examples, I have 5 to the power of log base 5 of 7. The base of my exponential is a 5. The base of the logarithm is a 5. So these two eliminate of sorts, and you are just left with the 7. Second example, this is the one that tends to trip students up because they keep forgetting if the base of the logarithm is not written, it's a 10. 10 to the power of log of 2, the 10 and the logarithm eliminate. The answer is just 2. Property 7 has fallen out of favor in mathematics in a lot of respects. Property 7 is largely used to convert logarithms. Because back in the day, back in the day like the Egyptians, they knew about logarithms. They had tablets. There was a person whose entire job was to walk around with tablets just to have all the logarithms on it. So they had a tablet that said, here's what log base, uh, log base 10 of 1 is. Here's what log base 10 of 2 is. Here's what log base 10 of 3 is. Log base 10 of 4, 10 of 5, 10 of 6, 10 of 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15. And it's, that's their job. They carried around these tablets with like, this is the decimal answer to this logarithm. Now hopefully you can see, that would be a lot of tablets if we had a tablet for every type of logarithm. Like what about log base 2, log base 3, log base 4, 5, 6, 7, 8? That would be really annoying. That's why we primarily just decided as a math community, you know what? Log base 10 is the standard. That's the one we're going to go off of. And then we're going to develop a property that is going to allow us to convert any logarithm of any base into a logarithm with a base of our choosing. This is often referred to as the change of base property because it allows me, for my first example, I don't like bases of 5. I like bases of 10. I can convert a logarithm into the quotient of two logarithms where we get to pick what x is. So I can turn that into log base 10 of 7 divided by log base 10 of 5. And now this is something that I could look up on one of those tablets. Now, as you probably will be able to guess, technology has caught up to the Egyptians. We now know how to change the base on calculators. That said, as stupid as it is for me to say this, this is a relatively new innovation in mathematics. We've only known how to change the bases on calculators since like the mid-90s. Most of the calculators that I see in the classroom right now, they can't change the base of a logarithm. So if you have a non-graphing calculator, you are going to use this a ton if I ask you to find the decimal value of a logarithm. Because if you look on your calculator, there's only a single log button on it. That log button is defaulted to having a base of 10. That means if you're going to use logs using a calculator, you have to use bases of 10, which means you need to convert a logarithm with a non-base of 10 into bases of 10, and you're going to use this property a lot. If you have a more modern rendition of a calculator, or you're using Desmos, or TI-80, 
Some 83s have it, but most don't. A TI-84 or newer, they actually have the programming in them to where you can change the base to whatever you want. You won't use this that often. So depending upon what access to technology you have, this is either gonna be used a lot or used almost none at all. But you still need to know it because of examples like number two. If you're dealing with the division of one logarithm by another, like log base seven of eight divided by log base seven of two, Utilizing property seven, I can turn that into a single logarithm, log base two of eight. And log base two of eight is asking two to what power is equal to eight? It's two to the third power. I also want to caution you because this property and property number five often get mixed up. They get mixed up the most in this chapter. Be careful to know which property to use and when. So in these problems, I'm going to be utilizing multiple properties at different times. For problem number one, first thing I notice is I'm multiplying logarithms by that two and that three. That to me screams property number three. Property three states, if you have a number on the outside of the logarithm being multiplied by the logarithm, you can bring that value inside as an exponent. That means this would turn into log base 10 of 4 squared. And now here's the second question I get, Mr. Silva. When I bring that 3 inside of the second logarithm, should I take the negative with it? Here's the thing, it doesn't matter. You can take the negative or leave it. You'll get the same answer. If you take the negative, then I would write plus log base 10 of 2 to the negative third power. If I don't take it, I'll put minus log base 10 of 2 to the third power. It does not matter. A negative will simply flip it to a fraction. If I don't take the negative, it's not a fraction, but I'm going to divide, which is making it a fraction. So I'm not going to take the negative. That is minus log base 10 of 2 cubed plus log base 5. I'm going to simplify the insides of those logarithms. 4 to the second power is 16. Two to the third power is eight. And now I have the addition and subtraction of logarithms. This is utilizing property four and property five at the same time. Property four deals with positive logarithms. Property five deals with the subtraction of a logarithm or a negative logarithm. I could write all that as a single logarithm where the values that were part of the positive logarithms, those numbers show up on top. The problems that dealt with a negative logarithm, that value is gonna show up on bottom. And then that is simplifiable because 16 divided by eight is two. And the last I check, two times five is equal to 10. And now I am utilizing property number two because the base of the logarithm is a 10. Inside of the, of the logarithm is a 10. So that is just equal to one. And this is where I get to say my, one of my favorite things when dealing with logarithms. That means this initial problem was a fancy way of writing the number one. And problem number two, I know just by looking at that, I am going to have to use property six. I know that because I have an exponent that has a logarithm in it. Property six is the only property that tackles that. However, there's a little bit of a snafu, which we'll solve later. The snafu is property six says the base of the exponential has to equal the base of the logarithm. This is a 49, this is a seven. That's kind of a problem. We'll deal with that later. First thing I notice with that exponent of two times log base seven of three minus four times log base seven of two is this is a property three problem because I am multiplying by two and I am multiplying by four. So I can bring those inside using property three as exponents. So that's gonna give me 49 to the power of log base seven of three squared minus log base seven of two to the fourth power, which I'm gonna simplify, get 49 
to the power of log base 7 of 9 minus log base 7 of 2, 4, 16. I am subtracting two logarithms. That screams to me property 5. I'm subtracting two logarithms. So I can combine those together in division. That is 49 to the power of log base 7 of 9 over 16. All right, now we're stuck with the 49. I need to turn that 49 into a 7. Luckily, I know how to do that. 49 is just 7 squared. So this is 7 squared to the power of log base 7 of 9 over 16. If you have a power to a power, according to power rules, you take the 2 and that log power, you're just going to multiply them. This is equal to log, oops, not log, this is equal to 7 to the power of 2 times log base 7 of 9 over 16. Now I'm going to utilize property 3 again because I am multiplying by a number in front so I can bring that inside as a power. That's going to leave me with 7 to the power of log base 7 of 9 squared is 81 and 16 squared is 256. Now the base of the logarithm, or sorry, the base of the exponential is equal to the base of the logarithm. Now we are utilizing property number six because again, the base of the exponential is equal to the base of the logarithm. Therefore, those two things just kind of cancel each other and you're left with the answer of 81 over 256 as our final solution.